A day after a gas explosion tore through Minnehaha Academy, the investigation begins. A crew from the National Transportation Safety Board say they're looking at why moving a gas meter caused that blast. Two people were killed in the explosion. 47-year-old Ruth Berg was a receptionist at Minnehaha Academy. 82-year-old John Carlson was the school custodian. The family of assistant soccer coach Brian Duffy says he is in critical but stable condition. They say he has traumatic injuries that will require more surgery. And right now, federal officials say the damage at Minnehaha Academy is so extensive they have to wait to determine if that blast area is safe to enter before they can actually go and start to examine the property. Bill Hudson is live at Minnehaha Academy in South Minneapolis right now. Bill? Hi, Frank. Well, they hope to begin that work tomorrow. That's what their intentions are anyway. Today was a relatively slow, quiet day as uh, the local, state, and federal agencies involved in this probe organized that investigation. However, the NTSB is leading this probe, and they confirmed today that, yes, yesterday work was being done to move a gas meter. Experts say a sudden break in the size of gas line feeding this school left mere seconds for escape. The combined gas oxygen mixture was immediately explosive. What led to the leak is now the focus of a local, state, and federal investigation. Our mission is to understand not only what happened, but more importantly, why it happens. Today, the NTSB's quick response team organized its probe to begin searching for vital evidence of the leak and why it happened. This is dangerous, it's destructive. It's deadly. It must be contained. Anoka attorney Fred Susi has represented many victims of past gas explosions, including 2004's triple fatal bank building explosion in Ramsey. He says a meticulous, slow probe for a cause is vital to both prevention and the lawsuits, which are sure to follow. The preservation of all evidence in the condition in which it was found after the explosion is critical to finding responsible parties who had to have screwed up for the gas to have escaped. Now that's one of the things they want to find out, of course, is why the gas was not shut off before that work began, either at the street or inside or at the building. That is something that they desperately want to find out, and we'll be asking about that starting tomorrow. They're going to be doing a number of interviews. They hope to get inside the building and start picking it apart brick by brick, Frank. And finally, they also say they're encouraging people who may have witnessed something, who may have cell phone video or photographs uh, at the time of the explosion to contact the NTSB. They can use all the help they can get to find out what went wrong. Very good. All right, uh, Bill, thank you. You bet. Today, the president of Minnehaha Academy shared with us what she experienced during the explosion. She was in her office interviewing a job candidate at the time. The explosion was so huge and everything started coming down. I was thrown to my knees and so I've got stitches. Donna Harris injured her knee and sprained both her ankles, but today she was back at work meeting with her leadership team. They're trying to assess how much damage was done to the building and how they can reopen for the scheduled start of the school year on August 23rd. Um, we have our faculty, tremendous faculty and staff um, ready, willing, um, but we need to know um, whether we need um, one other location, whether we need um, several locations. Number one, as I've said before, we, we trust God and know that he's in control and um, he will be our guide.